Did you warm my Benny Rooster for something? I sure do, Ellie. I just heard that Jane Hathaway is sick of bed. And I want to cook her up a nice big pot of chicken broth. Well, that's not... Granny, you ain't fixing to cook Earl. Oh, of course not, Ellie. But I figured you could turn him loose in the neighborhood, and he just might bring home a plump little hen. <laughs> Good looking little fella here, Earl. Well, Granny, I don't reckon Earl wants you to cook none of his sweethearts, neither. Well, maybe you're right. Just turn him loose outside. And if a chicken hawk shows up, Jethro can bag him. They make awful good broth if you simmer them long enough. Granny, Jethro tells me Miss Jane is ailing and you're fixing the doctor for her. That's right, Jed. Trouble is, I don't know for sure just what she's got. What she told you, Jethro? Oh, uh, she's got something called uh, sick benefits. <laughs> sick benefits? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I called her apartment this morning to find out could she come to supper tonight. And she says, I'm sick in bed, Jethro. And I says, well, Granny will come on over and doctor you. And she says, well, you tell Granny there's already a doctor on the way, because I got sick benefits. <laughs> I bet you it's something like a sick headache or maybe a sick stomach. I reckon it's worse than that, Ellie, because this is catching. Is that a fact? Yes, sir. Miss Jane says pretty near everybody that works down at the bank has got sick benefits. <laughs> yes, because they don't wear ass affinity bags. Could be like Mr. Drysdale got himself a heap of trouble down to the bank. Is Mr. Drysdale sick too, Jethro? No, I asked Miss Jane that. And she says the executives, that's the higher-ups, like the vice presidents, they don't have sick benefits. Probably because they eat better and they get more rest. And they wear ass affinity bags around their neck. Well, I reckon we all ought to pitch in and help Mr. Drysdale. He must be mighty short-handed down to the bank. Well, I can help count the money. Arithmetic is my best study in school. I'm up to 12 times 12 now. Well, how much is 12 times 12, Jethro? Wait a minute. Okay, now hold up two fingers. Twelve times one is twelve. Twelve times two is twenty-four. Twelve times three is thirty-six. Now, never mind, Jethro. We's all right proud of you, but right now we all better hurry down to the bank, see how we can help Mr. Drysdale. Come on, everybody. <laughs> I'll go in first, the rest of you wait here. How come? We don't know how catching that sickness is. Miss Hathaway. How can you do this to me? Now, now, you know the bankers' convention is in town and I'm making the keynote speech. What? Well, 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 you haven't finished writing it for me. <laughs> now, listen, couldn't, couldn't you come in today and be sick tomorrow? <laughs> 103 fever. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll turn on the air conditioning. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to Dr. Murphy. I know him. He, he, he's trying to make a big thing out of this so he can collect a big fee. Oh, for fine, Doctor. <laughs> I knew you were there. That's why I made a joke about it. Huh? Oh, of course. Certainly. Yes. <laughs> Keep her in bed. <laughs> Bye, Doctor. <laughs> Come in. How do you, Mr. Drydale? Mr. Clampett, hello. What can I do for you? Well, I reckon right now is what can I do for you? We heard about old sickness. Oh, don't <laughs> let that concern you. Anything you need? Well, nothing except a secretary, a new doctor, a speech writer, and someone to take over my work. <laughs> for a fellow with all them troubles, you're sure keeping your spirits up. Well, I, I try to keep laughing, so I won't cry. <laughs> oh, uh, will you answer the door? Howdy, young fella. Uh, you want to see Mr. Drydale? Uh, yeah. Come in, come in. No, 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 not today. Now leave me alone. See you later, Mr. Drydale. Yes, and thank you so much. Just be a neighborly. <laughs> <laughs> who was that? Never mind him, who are you? Oh, uh, we met the other day when I started to work here, Mr. Drysdale. I'm the new teller trainee. My name is... What do you want? <laughs> That's why I noticed that you were without a secretary, and well, I thought I might be able to help. You take shorthand? Oh, I don't mean me, sir. However, there is someone from the secretarial pool that I'd like to recommend. Oh? Who? Well, the chick, the da, uh, the lady at the first desk, uh, I believe her name is Kitty Northcross. The one that wears the tight sweaters? Yeah. <laughs> Does she? Oh, I only observed her efficiency. Yeah. Forget it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Skipper. Who? Well, sir. 
I just got out of the Navy, and I like to consider this bank my new ship, and you, my new captain. And I'm proud to be aboard, sir, because I know that your genius will pilot this ship of finance through the reefs of adversity and the stormy seas of competition until we drop anchor in the harbor of success. Bilgewater. Aye, aye, sir. Thank you, sir. And now to continue my speech. Gentlemen, it is my observation that a bank is like a ship. Its president, the captain. It is his responsibility to pilot that ship through the reefs of adversity and the stormy seas of competition until he drops anchor in the harbor of success. At this point, take a sip of water and wait for applause. Oh, good, Ellie, you're all ready. We'd best be getting down to the bank quick as we can. What well, Tom, do you reckon I know enough to be a banker's secretary? Shucks, yes, Ellie, especially since I'm going to be the banker. Oh, do you want Mr. Drysdale takes it? Well, he had to speak at a convention. He says all he needs is uh, a secretary, a speechwriter, a new doctor, and somebody to do his work. Granny's a dandy doctor, but who can write speeches? Well, Jethro found one in a book already wrote. He's in there helping Granny now mix medicine for Miss Jane. Now my secret yarb. <laughs> Stand too close to it while it's working, Jim. That'll cure Miss Jane, huh, Granny? It'll cure anything. I give it to a sick horse one morning. That afternoon, he won a race. You doctored a racehorse? No, plow horse. He never raced before. Hey, Jeff Rowe? Pa says, let's get it going. Come on, Emily. You got your speech with Mr. Drysdale? Yes, ma'am. One of the greatest speeches ever wrote. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago, <laughs> brought forth to this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the preposition that all men are created equal. My dingies, that's a dandy speech. I'm proud of you. I didn't write it. That was written by Abraham Lincoln, the president that whooped us out. South was not whooped. Granny, General Lee surrendered to General Grant. He did not. General Lee figured that Grant was a blacksmith. And he handed him his sword so he could sharpen it. And you will ever forget it. And so, gentlemen, in conclusion, let us think of our banks as a great fleet of ships rescuing the army of American citizens from the Dunkirk of financial difficulty. Let us take them aboard and safely sail them back to the shores of prosperity. <laughs> Gentlemen, for my arms. <laughs> beautiful, Skipper, just beautiful. Listen, the door was open and your voice drew me in here like a magnet. Could I go to the convention with you and hear the entire speech? No, you cannot. But, sir, you're my idol. Well, you're pretty idle yourself. Now, get back to your cage and do some work. What a voice. Sir, you were born to command. In the Navy, you'd have been an admiral. Well, I was in the Army. Corporal in the Quartermaster Corps. Great outfit, sir. Backbone of the armed forces. Get back to work. That voice. You and General MacArthur. Legends in your own time. Out. Pleasure, sir. Where did personnel dig up that nut? <laughs> General Drysdale. Drysdale. Oh, hello, Margaret. What? You want me to pick you up at the beauty shop? When? But, dear, you know I'm making the keynote address at the banker's convention. All right, darling, I'll cut it short. <laughs> Will you stay out of here, you nut? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I thought it was someone else. I'm terribly upset today. That's why we's all pitching in to help. Ellie here is going to take Miss Jean's place while Granny gets her well. No, you don't have to do that. 
Oh, it's no more than any neighbor do. Well, I, I do appreciate your kindness. I'm running late, so uh, please make yourself comfortable. See you later. Oh, Mr. Drysdale, uh, here's your speech. Oh, I did forget it, didn't I? Thank you, Jethro. Oh, you will. Well, goodbye, all, and thanks again. Bye. Bye. He's gone, Paul. Reckon you in charge now. Are you going to take his place, Uncle Jed? Sure going to try. Well, sit down to your desk and go to banking. I want to see how you do it. Me too. <laughs> Are you banking yet, Paul? Well, no, I reckon not, Ellie. I'm just uh, waiting to bank. How do you do it, Uncle Jet? Well, according to Mr. Drysdale, banking is mostly uh, giving people money when they need it. I'll get it, Paul. That's what a secretary's supposed to do. Howdy, this here's Mr. Drysdale's office. But Mr. Clampett's in charge now. <laughs> yes, sir, you bet you can. Howdy there. You need money? <laughs> well, come right on over and get it. <laughs> oh, diggity, he's banking now, honey, man. <laughs> North Cross. Gee, Mr. Billington. Just call me Bob, doll. Well, is this going to be my new office? Bob doll? <laughs> Could be, honey. Uh, I've been speaking to Milburn about you. Milburn? The president, baby, the president. <laughs> oh, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> Had a girl, oink. Oink? Just a term of affection, doll. It means I'm a hog about you. Oh, that's cute. I think. Well, now, listen, about tonight, this apartment where you live, uh, can you cook there? Well, I don't know. I've never tried. You have a stove? I think so. Well, how about a can opener? Oh, I know we've got one of those. I used it the other night to open a bottle of whey set when we did our hair. <laughs> Mother and me. Your mother lives with you? No, I live with her. Swell. Rescuing the army of American citizens from the Dunkirk of financial difficulty. Let us take them aboard. That's enough, Jethro. No wonder Mr. Drysdale needed himself a speechwriter. That's pitiful. I didn't understand it. Me neither, and I'm a banker. <laughs> Well, I reckon I'd best get out to Miss Hathaway's desk. But I ain't sure I know what to do. Well, just watch others, Ellie, and do like them. That's the way we learn. Yes, sir, Pa. Now, listen, honey, is your mother going to be home tonight? Oh, we're going to set our hair again. <laughs> well, hello there. Hello there. <laughs> Well, she's sitting at my desk. Get lost, honey, huh? But who, Mr. Billington. Oh, well, Mr. Billington. Wait, in the vault. <laughs> well, what about tonight? Can I tell Mom you're coming by? Not tonight, honey. I don't need my hair set. <laughs> hey. Hey. It's going to be wild. Tell me something. You don't live with your mother, do you? No, sir. Do you? <laughs> no, sir. What's your name? Ellie May Clampett. Well, there it is, Ellie, and you may clamp it. <laughs> you don't by any chance wrestle at night, do you? Oh, I like to wrestle any time. <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Well, Scooby-Doo, you want to wrestle now? Later, baby, later. Uh, listen, suppose I drop over to your place tonight. Well, fine. You haven't got a roommate, have you? No, sir. I've got a room all to myself. Now listen, here's the action. I swing by your pad about seven. I bring some Bossa Nova records and we trample a few grapes, huh? And we blast off to the local coffee shop, one where they don't hit me for too much bread. Then we swing back to your pad for a little moon orbit. Do you dig? Oh, yes, sir. Crazy. Whenever Paul goes fishing. <laughs> I dig his word. You wouldn't put me on, would you? Why, sure. Jethro? I ain't tall enough to put you on myself, but Jethro can do it. Who's Jethro? Yeah, Ellie May? 
Uh, this little fella wants to be put out, sir. Well, okay. Where would you want me to put you, number one? Oh, I'd like to be put on your list of friends. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale's office, but he ain't here. I got it, Ellie Mae. Howdy there, this is Jed Clamp at speaking. Can I do some banking for you? <laughs> oh, howdy, Miss Drysdale. You want to get picked up over to the beauty shop? Well, I can send Jethro right over in the truck. <laughs> no, your husband ain't here. He's over to the banker's convention making a speech Jethro give him. And now, gentlemen, it's with a great deal of pleasure that I introduce our keynote speaker, the distinguished president of the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills, Mr. Milburn Drysdale. Fellow bankers, four score and seven years ago, <laughs> our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new net nation. <laughs> well now, some, some of you seem to be amused because I have chosen the humble words of Abraham Lincoln to keynote this convention. But those of you who understand banking at its highest level will understand the Significance of these words, as I say, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Paul, this here's Mr. Wilson. The man that called you about borrowing money. Well, howdy there, Mr. Wilson. I'm pleased to meet you. Sit down a spell. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Hey, uh, have a smoke? Uh, yes, thank you. And it may, uh, maybe Mr. Wilson like a nice cold pitcher of spring water or some coffee or tea or something. <laughs> Would you, Mr. Wilson? No, no thanks, young lady. You look all tuckered out. Yes, I am. I, I've been going from bank to bank trying to borrow some money. Oh, didn't they have none? <laughs> well, none that they wanted to loan me. You see, Mr. Clamp, at my chicken ranch is mortgaged to the hilt. I have no credit, no collateral. I need money to buy feed. Well, we got a vault full of it. How much money do you need? <laughs> see if I just had enough. Are you kidding me? Tell me. Take him out of the vault and show him the money. Oh, no, no, no. Really... Would you really lend me the money? Well, that's what banks is for, ain't it? <laughs> Well, yes, but I, I'm poor. I have no security. Ain't no shame being poor as long as you're honest. How do you know I'm honest? Well, if you wasn't, you'd be telling me about how much you got instead of how much you ain't got. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, I've, I've never met a banker like you before. Oh, shucks. Mr. Drysdale can outbank me any day in a week. He must be a wonderful man. You bet he is the best banker around here. Now, how much money would you like to have? Well, sir, I, uh, I really need $5,000, but I, I can squeeze by on three or four. Really, me? Go fetch this man $5,000. Well, sir, Pop. Bring him a cup of that cider that Granny sent down to ward off sick benefits. <laughs> Dog, if he don't look like he's coming down with it. Hey, Pop. Now for my secret yarb. What is your secret yarb, Granny? Oh, I dashed to tell you, Jethro. Why, if that was to ever fall into the hands of the enemy, the North could win the war. I told you, Granny, they done won it. No such thing. We's just laying back, letting them think they did. One of these days when they ain't looking, <laughs> we's gonna jump them. You gotta believe me, the South done got what? You go cut me a hickory switch and meet me in the woodshed and I'll show you who got whooped. That's another thing I keep telling you. We ain't got no hickory tree and no woodshed. That's right. I guess I'm getting old and feeble. Yes, ma'am. Well, open your mouth and close your eyes. And Granny's going to give you a little surprise. Oh, good. Swallow that. That'll keep you well and learn you not to talk Yankee nonsense. <laughs> hey, Doc. I hear 
here some square put the bite on your old man for a gang of bread. Huh? But he laid 5,000 on him. Oh, you mean Mr. Wilson. That's a cat. How'd he get it? Well, he told Paul he needed it for his chickens. You're kidding. What would chickens do with all that money? Well, just for Mr. Wilson to buy feed. He's got a chicken ranch. And your dad gave him 5,000 for chicken feed? Why, sure. Paul's got 35 million. 35 million? And he likes folks that raises critters. Do you think he's got time to see a young critter raiser? <laughs> For sure, go on in. I'll dig you later. <laughs> uh, Mr. Clampett, sir, my name's Bob Billington, and your lovely daughter told me that you could spare me a few moments of your valuable time. You better wait, young fella. What's on your mind? Well, sir, I work here at the bank, but well, my heart's back on the ranch. The chicken ranch, that is. <laughs> or was, until I lost all of my chickens. Sweet little critters. How'd you lose them? Well, sir, I'm not sure. I just woke up one morning and they were gone. I guess one of them left the gate open. <laughs> what kind of chickens were they? Just regular kind, you know, with the wings and the feathers and those crazy looking feet. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, if I could just borrow $10,000, then I could get back into the business that I love, raising chickens. I see. Uh, how many chickens do you want to start with? Oh, about $10,000 worth. How many roosters? Oh, no roosters, just chickens. These days, you got to specialize. <laughs> Ellie Mae? Oh, howdy, Mr. Drysdale. How was your speech? Sensational. The high point of the convention. Listen, did a man named Wilson come in here to borrow some money? Yes, sir, and Paul gave him $5,000. Oh, bless him. That's what did it. Did what? Got me named Banker of the Year. They're putting a plaque in the lobby calling this the Bank with a Heart. Well, how come? Well, six banks were secretly nominated for the honor. Wilson went to each bank, and this is the only one that gave him money. Well, that poor man needed it. Uh, Wilson? Oh, 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 he's the biggest poultry rancher in the world. And a stockholder in all six banks. <laughs> oh, is your wonderful father still in there? Yes, sir. How about it, Mr. Clampett? I'm going to give you just what you need. Great, lay it on me. A little advice. Get back to your job and forget about chickens. You were born to command, sir. The voice of authority, the greatest I've ever heard. What about me? You are the only one who cuts him, Skip. What a privilege it is for a young fellow like me to see two great leaders together. It's a summit meeting, recreated. Out. out of my office, out of my bank. You're fired. You're an irresponsible loafer. May I give you as a reference, sir? My pleasure having served under your command, sir. Granny, this here's Mr. Billington, and he wants to court me. Is that true, young fella? You never love it is, Granny. Have you got sick benefits? I'm loaded with them. <laughs> Open your mouth and close your eyes and Granny will give you a little surprise. Swallow <laughs> this. Hey, you know something? When I was in the Navy, I tasted some jungle juice on Oka. No! <laughs> Good looking young fella. Go dance, too. I reckon that's the new dance he's been born to teach. It's called the Bossy Nova. <laughs>